In 2022, a lot of debate happens all the time on whether apps like Audible or getting a Kindle or doing something to that effect is worth it. And I wanted to break down in this one why Audible might not or might be worth getting this year, or honestly any year. This is gonna be a video that's gonna be fine for a while. So Audible has two basic parts of their pricing structure where they have Audible Plus and then Audible Premium Plus. Now the difference between these two is the fact that for Audible Plus you get a $1.95 a month subscription that gives you an entire catalog of everything that there is to offer on Audible and then for Premium Plus you're essentially getting the exact same thing except you also get one credit per month and that credit can be used towards any book. Now the nice thing about Audible is that it doesn't only have audiobooks but it also has podcasts, sleep tracks, meditation programs, and podcasts. So on that Premium Plan you're going to get all of those originals from Audible for free free and then with the plus program like I said it gives you one title per month now it's a very controversial topic as to whether this premium plus is worth getting in 2022 so the answer for you here is going to matter on something very basic do you plan on reading a book every month through audible that will average out to be more or less than an extra 12 bucks a month now if it's the case that you're going to read a lot of books. You could obviously do things like get access to your public library for audiobooks or purchase the individual books that you want off of Audible. The thing here is I like to have the premium plus option because there are many situations where these audiobooks will cost like 20 plus bucks. And even if I were to go and get a Kindle version of the book and then buy it with the extension on Audible, that's an option for some people. I don't want to do that because I probably am not going to read an audiobook list in the same book. Also, there is something to be said about the fact that this can be shared with a few people. So if you were to purchase this plan and like split the cost of everything with that person, it would make it really easy to just be like, hey, can you throw me 750 a month and then we'll split this membership. And then you're really only paying like 750 a month. And I'll show you really quick if you just untick one setting that it makes it easier for you to not have to deal with everything else. So just really quick going into the app itself, I'm currently reading Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker with Chance my podcast co-host and if we go into profile here and we go to the settings here and go to player here if you untick the sync and resume play position across all devices gets taken away so you don't have to deal with the whole like other people on different devices having the same thing because let's be honest most people are probably going to listen to this on their phone they're not going to go in between their computer and not now if you're the, the only one using it then having this ticked on is fine to switch between your computer or your phone or whatever, but I honestly only use this on my phone. And the application works really well in the sense that it has such a large catalog of stuff on the $2 a month plan that the added side of things with that extra 12 bucks a month is honestly just convenience. And for me, I think that level of convenience of getting that free title per month and then sometimes them having promotions and you getting more is better than just trying to like nickel and dime yourself. It's not that large of a difference. So I personally use this as I know I'm going to continuously read books. And this gives you a reason to continuously listen to audiobooks with that $14.95 a month. Because if you're going to basically purchase a book with the membership every month, you might as well use it. And the catalog that it has here is enormous. And while maybe it isn't every single book that exists, it's most books that people are interested in, especially in regards to nonfiction. So just looking at the basic functionality of the application itself, Obviously, first and foremost, you can close this phone and it will let you keep playing the book that you're listening to. It is compatible with Apple CarPlay from what I've used in my car. And the nice thing about this is just from a functionality standpoint, it has the ability to switch into drive mode, even if you're not in the car, which is interesting. And then the basic stuff that you can do here is you can actually have different clips of things. You could clip different parts of what you're listening to just in case you want to remember it. And there's various different ways that people have showcased how to connect that with other applications. And I don't want to dive too much into that right now, but it has very easy playback functionality where it'll actually segment things by chapter. And then you can look at the chapters and see where you're at in the book really easily on that navigation here. And then sleep is an option to stop when it's hitting a certain amount of time or when you hit the end of the chapter as you'll see here if you press end of chapter that means when the chapter ends it'll stop it from playing and then there is obviously a really large choice selection of the times playback speed and i personally listen to it somewhere between 
1.5 to 2. I think it's nice to get that level of increased speed sometimes when you're listening as it's, it's just good to get through. You get up to 3.5 speed on Audible, which is really solid for people who can listen that fast, but I don't think anything faster than that's really possible. And then, like I said earlier, if you want to press clip, your clip and bookmark have been saved, and then you could add a note to it or in this section here, you can see what length of time that it ended up being. If you look at this catalog with me and go to the Discover page, there is a very wide selection of Audible stuff that's coming to you consistently, and they're gonna keep expanding the catalog. So that value, maybe they'll change the price at some point, but it's it's continuously growing value as there's a bunch of Audible originals, which is really nice because when you have a bunch of originals that only come from one application, it gives you a unique set of books that you can listen to, whether it be fiction or nonfiction. And there are also a fair amount of podcasts that are interesting on here. I know that a lot of people really like podcasts, so there's nothing wrong with the fact that this has a interesting one like the Welcome to Our Show. This looks to be most of the cast of New Girl, which I'm a huge fan of, so I actually might have to start listening to this podcast. But they even have really big authors like Mel Robbins, who has Audible exclusives on here. And then just an example of some of the things that I have in here, if you look at everything down from Why We Sleep and The War of Art, I have a bunch of really interesting books that I'm gonna get into that were all included with this outside of the Premium Plus because I've only had Audible for a short amount of time and I bought The War of Art with just actual money and this was only a few dollars, but the Why We Sleep book would have cost me 20. So essentially I got two books for the price of about $20, I think, and it, that's taking one month of subscription and then The War of Art being $6 where if I had done this without that, I would have had to pay like 25 bucks. So it was cheaper in some circumstances. It is going to be cheaper. And then if we look at the rest of these, Caffeine by Michael Pollan's a book that I really wanted to listen to with Chance. So now that we both have Audible, this is gonna work. And there are a bunch of really long, good books. Massimo Pigliucci is an amazing author in the stoic world, and I can listen to an over 10 hour book from him. And that's just a part of the premium plan. So from my taste, Audible, is something that you really should consider getting in 2022 if you want to improve what you're doing because intentional content consumption is a little bit better than Netflix or HBO Max or Hulu or whatever. If you guys like this video, make sure to click on this one to see how you can improve your productivity even more.